Hi there again, it's uh, Dan, JD73 Goldman here again for Music Radar and Future Music Magazine. Today I'm going to be looking at Roland's latest synth offering, the Jupiter 50. Okay, so here we have the new Jupiter 50. Essentially it's uh, a trimmed down version of the Jupiter 80 that I reviewed in Future Music a few issues back. Um, Difference is obviously the hardware, uh, although it's longer, it's a lot lighter to carry than the Jupiter 80 which is great for gigging with. Um, we've got plastic end panels here instead of uh, brushed aluminium on the Jupiter 80. We've got half the polyphony with 128 notes instead of 256 um, which does result in a little bit of note stealing on this keyboard on more complex patches. Um, and obviously we've lost the colour touch screen off the Jupiter 80 um, which was one of the most appealing things about the Jupiter 80 actually but so we've uh, that's been sacrificed for a smaller monochrome screen here to bring it in at the uh, the two thousand pound including VAT price point. Uh, although it's going to hit street at around sixteen nine nine. Also, one of the other things that's missing um, is aftertouch from the keyboard. I mean, it's a really high quality feeling keyboard. It's great for playing all types of different sounds. Not ideal for playing piano, but certainly controllable. Uh, but there's no weighted model anyway, so uh, kind of have to play the piano sounds from uh, the unweighted keyboard, whether it's this model, the 50 or the 80. Quick overview of the uh, hardware. We've got the pitch stick here on the left, a couple of assignable switches, uh, a USB flash key slot for storing sounds and for playing back what and recording WAVs um, that you might have created on your computer or the or internal performances from the keyboard itself. Um, we've got bank select switches, registration buttons, a manual mode for creating patches from scratch really quickly just using a simple tone block, uh, the D-beam for hands-free um, control of sounds, control pitch volume or you can assign it to whatever else you want, volume control, reverb on off, two dials for controlling cutoff and resonance or assigning that to any other function, any other parameter as well. You can use it for the tone blender function as well which controls multiple multiple parameters from one dial. Arpeggiator section which can be assigned to either the lower or the upper parts. Uh, octave up and down, transpose switches, um, controls for the percussion layer or the lower tone layer. It can also split the lower tone as well. Um, harmony intelligence button where if you play chords in the left the uh, right hand will follow the kind of harmony of those uh, the chord laid out in the left hand. Um, part balance allows you to uh, level parts within a sound and you can also switch in different elements of the sound as well corresponding to each slider so you can switch out the percussion and lower level combined together or switching in out the upper level or switching in out the solo level. Each of those levels can have its own sort of split points as well and areas on the keyboard which is great and this is great for live performance as well um, for fading parts in and out. Um, there's one part less than on the uh, Jupiter 80 there. Uh, not a massive deal, but um, just something to be aware of. The colour buttons here uh, are select different categories of sound, so piano, electric piano, organ, bass, pads, strings, synth strings, brass, synth brass, woodwinds, guitar, synth leads, vibes, marimba, or other sounds. You also have an alternate button here which allows you to uh, have other sounds saved within a patch so you can quickly flip between sounds within a patch which is a really nice touch for live as well. Uh, so this is the upper area here. On the solo layer again you've got violin, trumpet and sax, flute, oboe and other and again an alternate uh, button for flipping to, between an alternative sound and the sound that's selected and a solo split as well so you can split the solo area. Um, to the right of the screen normal data entry dials, cursors and you've got your song player and recorder on the right there um, where you can capture ideas on the fly or playback sounds that you've uh, or performances that you've loaded in via the cart. Um, quickly and round the back you've got headphones, stereo uh, output, a stereo sub out, 
audio input for putting your iPod through or things like that. USB, MIDI in and out, no MIDI through, that's been lost from the Jupiter 8T. Display contrast, two foot control switches and a hole switch for sustain. And that's pretty much the overview of the hardware and the front panel. So if you double click on any of these category buttons, it brings up all the sounds under that particular category. So under the piano button, you've obviously got all the pianos. So let's check out a few different ones. We've got the Supernatural piano here. All the samples are great, the Supernatural sounds, because they're not actually looped, so there's no loop points or weird clicks in the sounds on the tails or anything like that, no aliasing. They just sound very rich and full and very natural. Um, Couple more pianos. Bright piano. Just turn the reverb off there. The effects actually sound really good as well. The reverb's very musical. All the effects are very musical. And there's plenty on board to be getting on with. Mellow piano. And you've got things like sympathetic resonance on the piano sounds and hammer noise that you can add. Bit like the Code Kronos. I actually think this board sounds a lot warmer and more realistic. You can get pretty deep patches going on this keyboard. Although one downside, like I was saying, is because the polyphony is halved, you can hear a bit of note stealing there. A lot of the time, the note stealing doesn't get in the way, but it's just something to be aware of. Piano and acoustic bass. There's a few piano sounds, electric pianos. Suitcase with phaser. Nice sounds, very dynamic, very natural sounding. Not the most authentic in the world, but if you do a bit of tweaking, you get closer. And if you go into the edit mode, menu, and hit enter, edit. Go to modify, you've got draw bars that come up on the screen here. And then you can scroll along, move them in and out. Obviously, because there's no touch screen, it is a bit of a pain. But with the upcoming iPad editor, hopefully you'll be able to do this function on the iPad, though I'm not 100 percent sure whether that's gonna be possible. So just bear in mind, it's not really ideal for live performance, this having to go through the screen. A touch screen would be much better. Go to the base section, just press exit. Got to remember to press exit, slightly annoying that you have to keep pressing exit to get our different edit modes, but there we go. Acoustic bass, finger bass, and it's nice when you do play legato, you actually get slides between the notes. That's one of the great things about this keyboard as well, just the kind of natural nuances that you can impart to a sound. And on S2 switch here, you can add harmonics. Or slap on S1. Once you uh, sit these tune these sounds in the tracks, they sound pretty authentic. Definitely the most authentic kind of samples I've heard, probably in a keyboard in a in a sample based keyboard today. Anyway, uh, pads, Jupiter style hollow pad. The filters sound really good as well. There's also new filter modes in the version 2 software, including a Moog mode, a Jupiter 8 mode, and a sequential circuits mode. Really 
juicy, really full and wide. The D2A sound great. Sound exactly the same as the Jupiter 80, which is one of my favourite sounding digital keyboards. Warm and wide and full. As well. It's actually very inspiring to play. It's just a shame there's not as many real time controls as I'd like. I love like a plethora of analog style synth controls here on the right, but the iPad editor, particularly for the synth sounds, will be great for that. So you might, have, if you can Velcro it onto the top there on the right hand side, it'd be great. It's a shame there's no aftertouch because that would really add another level to the dynamics of sounds and obviously the Jupiter 80 has that. I think it's probably the most missed feature on this version. It's nice when you scroll through sounds as well, it doesn't cut off the previous sound. So you can swap between sounds. Violins. You can use the part balance sliders to fade parts in and out, which is really nice. You can use an S1 and S2. You can flip between pizzicato. And more staccato type versions of the sound. Acoustic strings that definitely rival a, uh, a computer, dedicated computer based uh, string library. Especially when you layer them up, they sound fantastic. Synth strings. great for all your staple kind of sounds but it can definitely rival real analogs as well for, for actual warmth of tone and the filters are really smooth and wide. Again I've, I've got very few complaints about the actual onboard sounds bar perhaps for the clavinets which sound a little bit unauthentic and a bit underwhelming really. Brass and sax. Again, on their own, a lot of these don't sound amazing, but once they sit in a track. due to the few notes of polyphony there compared to the Jupiter 80. Alto sax. It'd be so nice to have aftertouch here when you're leaning into it, but... Uh, woodwinds again. Acoustic guitars are fantastic as well. Um, and you get slides between notes. Depending on how you play depends how authentic the slides sound, but they are pretty good. Finally, acoustic wise, got vibes and marimbas. Some of these have trills on the control as well, like on the pitch rail. I 
Okay, in this part of the Jupiter 50 video, I'm just going to show you a bit about editing and how the sounds are made up. Firstly, um, let's look at a live set. Now, a live set is the most important kind of sound that you use in Jupiter 50. That's made up of four elements and is always controlled by the upper slider here in the middle. Uh, now, a live set can be made up of supernatural synth or supernatural acoustic tones, and they can all be layered together. That can then be placed into a registration along with a lower part and a solo part as well on the top. So it's very powerful. If you think about it, you could have a bass sound, a solo lead sound at the top, and uh, a four element, four tone stack in the middle. So, uh, and then you can mix and blend them as you want with the part sliders as well in registration mode. So all in all, very, very powerful in terms of laying it, layering. If you want to edit sounds further, simply hit menu, enter. Let's first edit this live set. Here we go. So you can see this sound here is made up of uh, different elements, different layers. We've got what are called, uh, there's four of the same sound here laid up called Techno Lead 36. So there's loads and loads of different sampled synth waves to choose from and uh, PCM waves. Uh, various uh, other uh, wave shapes as well, squares, triangles, pulse width, stroke squares together, all sorts of different combinations that you can use. Now, um, if you hit modify, you can then go into editing these layers. So we'll just hit, uh, you can hit, obviously you've got a pitch envelope, uh, amp envelope, LFOs, obviously one per um, oscillator, up to 12 oscillators, so up to 12 LFOs going on there, potentially. Um, a miscellaneous tab as well, where you've got uh, time interval envelope sensitivity, envelope looping um, for time evolving sounds as well, and um, portamento, portamento controls and different modes. Uh, and modulation send amounts. So if we go into synth edit here, you can select the different uh, partials that you're editing. Um, this is the deeper synth edit screen. Partial number one, which is highlighted there. You can add in more partials here, or we'll turn them off. That's just one partial going on. And you select the different ones here. Let's listen to the filter cut off. Change the resonance a bit. Mess around with the, uh, the decay slider. Sustain amount. And there's various different filter modes. Low pass three, and they all react differently. A low pass four. High pass, band pass. So all with their own inherent different sort of character. Turn that resonance down again. So not to annoy you too much. Then you can switch in the other partials. So if we we're now looking at partial two, I've selected so like I've selected partial two to edit. That's LF uh, low pass filter mode one. Let's switch it to LFO low pass filter mode two. And lower the cutoff of that element a little bit. Have more resonance. As you can hear, the cutoff is only affecting one layer at the minute. But if I hold down all three select buttons, the cutoff then will filter all three layers together. A bit like the tone blender function, where you can use the cutoff dial for the resin style to control multiple parameters, not just filter parameters, but any other parameter on the keyboard as well. Which goes some way to making up for the lack of real-time controls on this keyboard. It is annoying in this mode because you just want to grab some faders and sliders, but it's very, very screen-centric. As I've already said, though, hopefully the iPad editor will kind of help out a little bit there. So that's two partials. Obviously you can mix and blend them here. So you can hear the oscillator beating there from the detuning. Switching a third partial. So obviously there's quite a lot of portamento and it's in unison mode at the minute. If I go to Pro Edit, 
You can also change all your wave shapes. Well, there seems to be a bug there because it just cut out. Anyway, it's come back to life, thankfully. Synth edit. Uh, you can choose not only different waves, but def different variations on those waves as well. So these are different variations on pulse width square. Fat kind of movie type sound. Does really sound great, this synth engine, gotta say. Really fat and juicy. Good for all sorts of sounds, synth leads, basses, sound effects. Now let's scroll down a bit. We've got all sorts of things like oscillated detuning. Pitch envelope controls, filter envelope controls, amp envelope controls, you name it, it's here. LFO shapes. Uh, if we just scroll through, you can see how many parameters there are. Scrolling through here. I want to switch, uh, there's an analog f uh, field parameter as well, which is kind of like, I suppose, oscillator slop on um, a Profit 8 or something like that. So that has some nice fatness as well. Plus there's unison mode as well. And you can have different sizes of unison. And this is per layer as well, per partial. Let's switch this to poly. Just switched off portamento there. back here to the first edit page we've got common parameters as well where you can um, phase lock sounds as well um, and select manually select cutoff and residence and the live set category that you're using just basic parameters there different layer controls so leveling panning for each layer Effect sends, keyboard note ranges, effect sends for each of the four different MFX units and the reverb. So you can have layers not sending to the reverb or sending completely to the reverb. Just turning up layer one there. Now I've added in the other two the other two elements out of the live set there as well. Now. So we've got a massive sound going on. Back to one layer. So you've also got controls for your pitch and vibrato rates as well. And how and delay that as well. So there's everything in that you need. It's really a programmer's dream. It's just slightly frustrating that it's quite hard to access all these different parts uh, without having all the real-time controls. Um, let's have a quick look at the effects as well. 
before I sign off. You've got different mod effects here. You've got low boosts, super filter, step filters, going to be applied to each layer. Um, modulation delays. Flangers. Choruses. Let's just turn the, uh, the bright off. Slightly annoying. <laughs> Back to the effects. Turn the reverb off. Uh, so layer one here, we've uh, just switch on the layers first. That always helps. <laughs> distortion chorus, distortion delay. Chorus delay, plunger delay, sympathetic resonance for using with the piano, four tap pan delay, serial delays, guitar amp simulators. Step flanging. Auto pans as well. So everything's in there. Um, I hope that's just giving you a quick overview, anyway, of of what's going on in there. It's very, very deep, and it's 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 quite hard to sort of show you everything in a lot of detail here. But um, that's the basic way that it works. As you can see, uh, it's quite screen centric. But once you get your head around it, it does become more, more become more second nature and uh, the main thing is it sounds fantastic. I think it's a great board. It sounds every bit as warm uh, and as hi-fi as its bigger brother, the Jupiter 80, which is Roland's flagship. So you really are getting the quality of sound that's in Roland's flagship synthesizer, which can only be a good thing, and it comes in significantly cheaper than the flagship model. We're looking at about 1699 Street, um, whereas the Jupiter 80 is around 2700, maybe a bit less. Um, so uh, the G Jupiter 50 is a lot less. Um, obviously for that price, quite a bit has been stripped out, which is the biggest killer for me is after the lack of aftertouch. Um, the smaller screen, I mean, having a touchscreen is is really essential on this kind of keyboard, especially when you want to get stuck into, say, a drawbar organ sound or uh, that kind of thing. It's all very well having the pictures of the drawbars on screen, but if you can't just dig in and grab them, it's kind of frustrating. All in all, though, a fantastic sounding board. I really can't fault it, apart from the clavinet samples are a bit weak. Um, uh, obviously, you lose a part. Um, in the uh, in the live sets as well in the registration but that isn't such a big deal uh, the polyphony being chopped in half that's more of a deal because you do find on deep multi-layered patches that you can run out of uh, polyphony and you get a bit of note stealing as well so that isn't ideal but I suppose there has to be some compromise there as it is a lower down product in the in the range but uh, all in all it's fantastic for film composers, uh, for people more into more electronic music, people after great expressive acoustic sounds, and it could really be your go-to keyboard for, for most sounds, whether that's live or in your studio.